look, another product that prominently features Charizard. It's not that they've done like a super crazy amount of them, but he did have a UPC not that long ago, and now he has a EX Premium Collection box. Box. I should box. Uh, anyways, this was $42. I don't know what it is at retail. Usually my card store is pretty dang close to retail most of the time. Sometimes they're right on it, sometimes they're a dollar or two over, and sometimes they're under. Wow, this box is insane to open. We're just gonna just absolutely destroy it, because like, good God. This comes with a bu bunch of stuff. I don't even remember what all of them are, but we're gonna take this off, because I did purchase this a little while ago. I just haven't had uh, the slot to film it and upload it and all that fun stuff, the time to edit. So of course we have a bunch of promos in here. We have the Charmander Hollow uh, that is Obsidian Flames, now reprinted. Uh, let's see, we have a code card for the entirety of this box. We have the actual promo, number 56, Charizard EX, and that's the... Uh, the terraform version, but they definitely did a little bit of the background that you would expect for like shinies in the sort. Uh, I believe that's how they're doing like the full art terras, like all of them, but I could be wrong. And then we have the obsidian flames as well, reprinted Charmeleon now as a hollow. With all of that out of the way, let's see what we have. We have obsidian flames, Paldea evolved, and scarlet and violet. Three different sets there. Then we have another Obsidian Flames, another Paldea Evolved, and another Scarlet and Violet. We see a trend here. This was the most interesting part to me. This is literally just a card holder. So you put a card inside, you have some nice artwork there on the background. It is made by Ultra Pro. Um, I would love to see the Pokemon Company make these just all the time, not just like a one-off. I don't know if they've ever done this before. Let me know in the comments if you know of Another one of these. I mean, yes, they did something similar with like the McDonald's thing here or two ago. It was like a cardboard thing. And I guess they kind of did a card holder with the UUPC, but not really. This like thick plastic though is awesome. So it just has a hinge on the bottom, a magnet on the top. And I guess we're going to rather fittingly put a our Charizard in here. So I guess we just kind of line it up in the center like that. Put the little thing in the hinge down on the magnet and bam. We have our Charizard EX in a beautiful little uh, card holder. It definitely shows off the card pretty well. I, I'm I'm a big fan of this. This is an interesting change. Like I said, I would love for them to just keep this trend going forward. But I also need to figure out what, uh, what card I actually want to keep in here. This isn't a bad runner, though, being the card that it came with. Oh, I didn't even realize it comes with what looks like a stand. That is really hard to get out. Get, get out of the plastic. Get... There we go. Yeah, so on one end of the stand, we just have the Ultra Pro logo, but then on the other, if it's gonna be legible, hopefully, let's try and get it in focus here, Pokemon Trading Card Game. So of course, that's the side you're gonna to wanna to face forward. And that is just going to rather tightly, very snug, fit in there. So now your Charizard can just stand up by himself. That's really cool. There, we'll just keep that back there for the video. Actually, get rid of the Bulbasaur and put it right there in the center. I have to angle him a little bit to keep the glare off of him. But then finally, we have a thing of sleeves. Of course, these are the ones, the big thick borders that I don't care much for. Um, again, on some cards, it can look really nice. Well, on some uh, artwork, some sleeves. Yeah, I don't know if it's necessary on this. I prefer the artwork to go all the way to the edge. But we do have some nice looking Charizard sleeves. So I'm thinking we just go in order of release for all of these packs. So let's start off here with the base set Scarlet and Violet. Hope to get some pulls out of here. Uh, I wish this box would have released after, uh, da, 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 what is it called? Paradox Rift, because it would be nice to get some Paradox Rift packs in here. But honestly, just getting uh, anything from Scarlet and Violet makes me happy. Um, Sword and Shield era was definitely fun, and I would love to get some more like Brilliant Stars and stuff. But it does feel good to move on to a new era. We have the Skeleturge, we have the Fue Coco, Ironic, and we have the Gardevoir EX. Probably not worth a whole lot, but not a bad looking card. Then our next base set, Scarlet and Violet. Let's hope to get something else. I, I've definitely pulled a lot from these. We've done a lot of this base set. We have the Smoliv, the Primeape, Pommy, Torrentula, the Breloom, uh, the Electric Bird, Greedent, uh, God, how do you say your name? Florigato? I think it's Florigato. We have Fido and 
the Magnazone EX, and I think I already have like probably like three of you by now. Next up, we go to Paldea Evolved, moving ahead one set or just a few months to the second release. So pull out the code card, then we have the Electric Bird again, the Tinkaton, the oh, oh, I threw that one. A uh, Glimit, a Jet Energy Fighting Owlia, Stiff Sableye, and we have the Golden Rare, number, what is that? Number 272 of 193, really close to my username, well, my original username, this channel's a bit different, but Seeker227 is my usual name, very close, very close, which is, makes me happy because, uh, this is my my boy from Scarlet and Violet. And getting him as the Golden Rare is just fantastic. Behind that, we have a Hollow Wiggly Tuff. Not upset about this. There, I went ahead and made some uh, improvements to our background there. Anyways, now we have the Paldea Evolved again. Uh, not a bad pull rate so far, I gotta say, especially after this last video, the uh, Paradox Rift ETB. We, we didn't do super great in that one. We got some nice cards, I'll say that much, but the actual uh, quantity was uh, very low. So, so far, this box is making me happy. We have the Weavile, the Litleo, and a Copperajah, which I've heard it pronounced that way. Um, Copperjaw is just easier for me to say, but I don't know which one is correct. Uh, EX right here, the Full Art, 245 of 193. Once again, making me question, what's the point in Secret Raiders if there are almost as many of them as there are standard cards in the set? But we have our big ol' elephant boy. Not a bad looking card. I really do like the, uh, like, color, f like, wave going on throughout the background. And with two packs left, both being Obsidian Flames. First off, wow, okay, that was, like, a rare thing to happen where I... It, it is so hard to open, I literally tear part of the pack off. That does not occur often. I like to assume that I'm, like, not half bad at opening these things after doing god knows how many on this channel. There's the code card, and we have the Glimit Rhyme Rock Ruff, the Wiglet Crabominable, the Mobile Arvin Snubble Heatmore Anglomora EX. What is happening in this video? Just pull after pull after pull. Once again, another secret rare, number 213 of 197. Yes, so many pulls, so many secret rares, which really doesn't mean much anymore. Uh, Glamora EX. Not bad, but definitely not a, like, you know, standout favorite of mine. It's just a Pokemon to me. I thought they would be more special when I was playing through the game and I first saw them. I was like, these things are kind of freaky. Um, I don't know, like when I first saw it, it was, I, I, you know, the little Glimlet as well. It's just, I expected them to be a lot more special, but they're just kind of everywhere. I guess they're kind of, like, unknown in that regard, where... When you get to where the unknown are, there's just dozens of them. I'll go to Legends Arceus, so there's like, what, five? But, uh, at least the unknown have all of these variants, right? All of the letters, um, and then, like, some symbols and stuff. But, this, I don't know, there's only two of them, the base form and the evolved form. But anyways, now it's time for the bonus card of the day. Uh, explanation down, uh, there in the corner. And, let's see, we have a white sleeve here. Uh, definitely not one of mine, so let's pull that out. It is not double-sleeved, but it is in fantastic condition. So my only assumption is that it's in good condition because it's from one of the newer sets. We have Copycat. Yep, this is actually not super new. Uh, 2021, this is going to be Evolving Skies. I mean, nowhere near a vintage card, but still nice to get something, you know, that's about, what is that, about three years old now? Um... Now as a, uh, well, and, you know, in uh, this good of condition. But we have our full art copycat, which is just a good looking card. I like the idea that copycat is literally just like the human ditto. But we'll put it back in the, oh, I actually like that. That's a nice little, little thing. You have like white on the back, black on the front. That's interesting. Um, not a bad little outer sleeve there, but it'll go back in that until I replace it with something better. So if you guys liked the video, give it a like, all of that fun YouTuber stuff. If you feel like binging some more Pokemon, there's a playlist on screen. And I guess rather fittingly, we'll go ahead and pull up the video for the Charizard at UPC. So I really do hope that you guys have enjoyed, and hopefully I'll see all of you guys next time. Goodbye for now.